Only two teams in the history of Michigan basketball have ever gone unbeaten at home, 1974 and 1977. John Beeline's Wolverines of 2012, so very close, but Purdue had different ideas. Welcome to Inside Michigan Basketball, Coach. I know it was a tough loss for you. It's not the way you want yeah. to end your home portion of your schedule, but tell me how it happened and well, why. It was a difficult game. You know, first of all, we came out because it was Zach and Stu and Corey's last game. We came out with really uh, uh, probably too amped up a little bit, got down 9-2. to two and had a battle back the entire game. It's very rare, rare that we don't you stay ahead, aren't ahead in the first half. We were behind the whole game playing catch up, catch up, finally got the lead. Uh, they made the right plays down the stretch. This is a very good Purdue club. We got to keep people, yeah. you know, remind people that this is a team that is one of the best in the country at shooting the basketball. They are the best team in the country at taking care of the basketball. So anytime you do yeah. beat them like you did in West Lafayette, you're going to have to earn it, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, we had, to, we had to earn it, and we could do that in West Lafayette today. They shot the ball great. They didn't turn it over, and they're always a good defensive team. I mean, always. And we did, uh, we did not have a great offensive night. We missed a lot of you know, contested shots, but shots that we've been making, shots that we made the last few games, but uh, tonight just wasn't enough. You know, it's interesting because I thought early on in the game, Purdue played like your club, has been playing basically yeah. all season long. Very good defensively, very sound, and it seems like they turned the table. Yeah, they really did a good job of just, they, they put their pressure, uh, their offense was, in, was, was really a pressure offense. They were, had a, they were flying around. We had to get to people. We, they do not score inside at all. They're looking always the time to shoot a three ball or get you off the drive. Um, they got just too many looks. We had some miscommunication here and there because of their speed. We, it will make us better. You had done such a good job of getting to the free throw line, Northwestern, yep. for example, yep. Ohio State. Couldn't quite get there against the Boilermakers. No, line. we could not. We could not get in the lane today the way we wanted to. When we got in there one time, I think we charged. We just didn't do a good job in those areas. And, uh, you know, you got to credit their defense from that, and we got to find ways to get in there better. Very emotional locker room. You get John Beeline and the Wolverines sing the victors after every home victory, every road victory. Unfortunately, did not do it Saturday night. Some of your underclassmen were very emotional about the yeah, loss. Yeah, it, it was it was sad in there because those guys, everybody wanted to win for those th those three seniors, and we just didn't get it done it, collectively as a group. So uh, between our coaches, between everybody, we feel bad about it. But Zach Novak said it best. He said, hey, we, I didn't come here to win on senior night. I came here to win. And we got more winning to do if we take this and use it constructively. Yeah, that was the feeling in the locker room for sure. Novak and Douglas set that tone and everybody else followed. Let's not get too down about the loss against Purdue because we have bigger goals in mind. I know the guys on this team, you know, we responded to adversity really well all year. And, you know, um, you, you know, you go into the you go into the Big Ten tournament, you know, riding a seven game winning streak and, you know, being a Packer fan, I, I've seen how that how that story can end. You know, it's almost like you're waiting. It's got to end. So I, I just think that this is something that we can, you know, we can build on. We can learn from. And, you know, we need to turn this into a positive. We wanted to get this one for our seniors. And, um, you know, it just was fitting for two guys like that that just work hard every day to, to make history, and we couldn't make that happen for them. So it was pretty, pretty sad. Do you want something too much? Is that, was that possible? Um, I mean, it might have been possible to get caught up in all the, you know, all the festivities and stuff. But at the end of the day, you just got to play. And I think up to this point, we had done a good job of focusing. Um, I mean, we had Ohio State, we had college game day, and we were able to come out and focus. And today it just wasn't there, so I don't think you can necessarily blame it on that. I just don't think we were ready to play. This isn't the end. Um, we'll learn from this. If you know, Coach said it best, if he knows us uh, at all, he knows that we'll come back, bounce back, you know, we watch film, and uh, just keep going forward. It wasn't, um, it wasn't anywhere near our potential where we can play, but... Uh, you know, if we, if, if we could trade this in, if we lose this and make a, a run in the tournament, you know, we'll take that any day. As Zach Novak said, if we had a chance to trade this one for a game down the road and, and either the Big Ten tournament or NCAA tournament, then, uh, you know, any day we'll take that one. I mean, it's a tough one to swallow, but you just got to kind of learn from it. And I, I mean, we've proved all year that we can learn from a loss. Uh, I don't, we haven't learned, lost twice in a row yet, so um, we just got to learn from this one. You know, it was one of those goals we wanted really bad and we didn't get it, but I think, you know, if we can use this as motivation and propel this, you know, if take this and say, you know, we, we didn't get the first one, but we really want the second and third goals, you know, really bad, I, it'll help us. We just got to use it to, to our advantage. So the seniors play their final game, but boy, some records that they have set and the first senior class for you here in Ann Arbor. I know it's special for you, but yeah. you've seen a lot of senior nights. 
talk about Zach Novak and Stu Douglas. Well, first of all, I want to start with Ben Cronin. That we really, that's too bad. That, that young man was going to be a tremendous player. He had, uh, we had, was one of the first guys we got away from other people. From Pitt and Syracuse both offered that young man, and he played just minutes for us. So I saw his mother today. It was very emotional for me to see his mother because they've been through a lot since he lost his dad right after he signed with us. So, uh, and then we obviously with Stu was the next one to commit, and he has just been wonderful. He has, I've seen a young man grow from, you know, a, a, just a shooter that came in here and a guy that was probably uh, not as focused as, as uh, he, he probably is now. And then Zach, I mean, it's just been a wonderful, uh, with him watching him through four years grow and be a lead this team. To th that those guys have been to three NCAA tournaments. Well, hopefully this will be the third NCAA tournament in their four years here. I don't think anybody would have predicted that, seeing we hadn't been in 11 years before they got here. Not bad for guys that so many people said couldn't play in the Big Ten, yet you and your staff knew they could. Did they grow as leaders in your mind? Oh, absolutely. They were tremendous with it. And Corey Person as well, who, who was a, a preferred walk-on that came in and did a wonderful job leading us. So, yeah, those guys were a good core to build from. Um, they set a, a high mark here of how a Michigan uh, basketball player conducts himself, how he studies, how he practices, what his work habits are. And our younger guys have watched and they know what is expected here thanks to those four. Novak and Douglas right now rank fourth and fifth respectively all time in Michigan history in three point field goals made and Novak recently named a third team academic all American. So our congratulations going out to Zach Novak. Stick around a little bit later on one of their senior teammates gets involved in hyping up the maze rage. But when we return the Wolverines week started out well in Evanston. We'll recap it for you with the head coach next. Thirteenth ranked Wolverines ready themselves now for the final Big Ten push. Starting with this one here tonight in Evanston, Illinois, against the ever dangerous Wildcats of Northwestern. Burke on the right wing, foot pass back to Douglas, touch pass over, open from the left corner, bang for three, and Michigan's back in front, 39-38. Our bench has been has been really key to our season, and we got in a little bit of foul trouble. And I've just been trying to come in and provide any sort of spark I can getting on the floor and Evan, Blake, Colton, they all did a great job and that's that's what our bench is trying to do, just come in and provide a little bit of a spark. Drive, stolen by Novak, he's got Burke up the right side, feeds him on a left pass, lays it in, yeah, and Michigan yeah, by three, 41-38. Sure top of the key, drives on Douglas, backs his way in, finger rolls it down. Burke for Michigan, Scherner for Northwestern. Part away for the corner, splash, he hits the three, and we're dead left at 40. Bounce pass finds Hardaway, catches and fires, missed it. Backside Karam, saved by Novak, thrown off Hearn, picked up by Douglas to Novak, baseline, topside Burke, walks into a three, money! Zach Novak. My teammates did a great job making the defense collapse on them uh, when, they, when they played us in the three zone. You know, I was kind of surprised that they stayed in the three zone, but... You know, we made some adjustments, and every time Stu got into the paint, you know, I, he'd be looking at me for a wide open shot. Douglas, a deep three. Money! Oh, yeah. Stu Douglas wears a smile ear to ear, and Michigan leads by nine. We just wanted to attack that 1 3 1 zone the same way we were, and we just got open looks. Uh, Trey kind of relaxed us with that first one, and, um, you know, Zach and I just kind of took care of business after that. Wolverines started the week outright. They went down to Evanston and beat a very good Wildcats club. Welcome back to Inside Michigan Basketball. A very good team that is very desperate for a yep. victory. It, it was the right way to start. Yeah, they were really uh, to go on the road and sweep uh, sweep them in two overtime games. Uh, it was wonderful, our guys. I mean, we were down four with two minutes to go, and we still hung in there and got the W. And uh, I'm just really proud of our guys' success, especially in overtime. We've been a good team in overtime this year. And we were a great team in overtime at Northwestern. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the overtime specifically. Not often do you see a team jump out to a 9 nothing lead and then outscore the opposition 18-6 in their barn in the extra session. How'd you get those threes to go? Burke, Douglas, and Novak? Well, we, we ended up, one was a, just a great hustle play with after the ball knocked around, we, we really did a great hustle and then got the ball to Trey at the, at the top. Next one was another hustle play where Timmy got into the lane, found the right guy, hit Zach in the corner. I think that was his first three. And the last one, I think we just sort of played the shot clock, played the shot clock. We were up six. Stu hit one from uh, from the, <laughs> the, the, the North Shore of, Chi of Chicago, and that was that was it. 
Yeah, no doubt. Uh, look, let's talk a little bit about your defense, though, because we always talk about the shooters, yeah. and we love to see yeah. you rain in threes, yeah. but your defense was the difference, especially on John Sherna. What would yeah. you do so well yeah, on we him? Just, we just did a really we had a, I, I, we did a great job with that scouting report, realized how we have to play them, and just did a wonderful job playing them. So I really think that it's a uh, – is a credit to everybody that they we we worked hard even the week before we played Ohio we spent one day on Northwestern knowing we only had two days for Northwestern never been able to play Northwestern on anything but two days rest or two days prep and you really need that third day just to get them their scout team ready and we were we were blessed that we had we used an extra day and our kids were so smart at picking up what we were going to do well you did such a good job of switching constantly throughout the game that seemed to throw northwestern off a little bit well yeah it, it, we switched at the right times and uh, they still did what they did do but they are a tremendous team they have a tremendous coach i think they're going to make a run here either in the tournament or, or this week make the ncaa tournament for the first time ever well, this team is back on the map because of John Beeline's coaching, because of the players he's brought in and continues to bring in, and also because of the marketing efforts by this university. When we come back, we'll talk about some of the players and how they've gotten involved in such an effort. We'll be back with more after this. Part of the reason Michigan has been so good all season long is their dominance at home. But once in a while, they need a pick-me-up from the crowd. The players are more than willing to help, especially the senior with a very bright personality. They wanted to do a video that kind of got the crowd and maze rage into it. So uh, originally they asked me to do it. And um, so I was like, yeah, but I kind of didn't want to do it by myself. So I made Tim, I made Tim come do it uh, with me because I thought it was going to be kind of cheesy or corny if I was just up there by myself <laughs> trying to get everybody excited. So uh, I made Tim do it with me. We were trying to get this right, started. Right. All right, so you'd be like, so you'd be like on your feet. He halfway wanted to do it, but then he was kind of like, I don't know what to say. You started off. So how I just say get up? Feel, yeah, get up on your feet or something like that. So hold on, you gotta turn this way <laughs> down. We spent like 10, 15 minutes beforehand. Like they were ready for us, but we were in the back like, okay, what are you gonna say? And then I'll be like, stand up. All right, I'm gonna say this. And then we'll just start, and then we'll just start raising the crowd. Then you go say this, and then. How long does it have to be? So we were trying to figure out exactly what to say, and then we'll just do stuff like I can't hear you or something like that. We didn't want to look like fools on the screen in front of everybody. You don't be doing like no Ohio like. No, no, no. Because maybe that was corny. Because we knew it was going to be a pack house that night. We got more swag than them, bro. All right, let's so. Go. Get up, Michigan. Get up. Let's go. Stand up. Stand up. Can't hear you, man. Can't hear you. A little bit louder. Let's go. Get up. Get up. Get Let's up. go, Blue. Let's game go. Game time, baby. Let's, Let's go. go. Yeah. Let's go, fam. Let's go. Let's go, Maze get Ray. Up. Get up. Get up. You, baby. Let's go. I definitely picked up at it, and then I, I knew it was playing also because all my teammates just looked at, gave me this look, and <laughs> and and was busting my chops for about it the rest of the the rest of the night and after the game. So. Everybody was trying to imitate me after the game, so I mean, I was okay with it as long as it worked out and got the fans into the game. It was fine with me. Corey's got the perfect personality for that, doesn't he? Someday I could see him in an arena trying to get all kinds of fans revved up for whatever event they may be at. It was a special night for him and really a special night for any Michigan basketball follower. When we come back, the ceremony for a late great Michigan man whose name now sits atop this building forever. That story is next. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by AT&T. We honor a great Michigan man, not just a University of Michigan man, but an individual who gave so much to the state he grew up in and dearly loved. William Davidson had a long-standing relationship with the University of Michigan. He earned his bachelor's degree in business administration in 1947 and was a member of the track and field program. His roommate at the university was Merv Pregelman, an All-American football player for the Wolverines and a member of the College Football Hall of Fame. It was a great experience because, first of all, being his roommate and getting to know him so well, and secondly, to meet all of his friends that came from Detroit that were at the university. It sort of broadened my horizons and gave me an insight that I really didn't have before. He was so unusual. In fact, you might even say a little unpredictable. In my opinion, Bill Davidson was a genius. Um, 
I don't know how you'd compare him to others, but he had an insight, he had an intelligence, he had the courage, so that you could expect big things from Bill. And of course, we weren't disappointed. Bill loved the University of Michigan and generously gave to the institution. He established the William Davidson Institute that is affiliated with the business school. He served the university on the president's advisory group, the Michigan Difference National Campaign Cabinet, and the business school visiting committee. Bill's experience at Michigan not only gave him the drive to be the best in the business world, it shaped him as a person and cultivated his desire to become involved in sports. He acquired the Detroit Pistons in 1974 while also running the family business Guardian Industries. Bill ran the Pistons until his passing in March 2009, building the organization into the model NBA franchise. He became the first owner in sports history to win championships in three different professional leagues, the NBA, the WNBA, and the NHL, all in one season. In 2003-04, the Pistons claimed their third NBA championship. The Tampa Bay Lightning won its first Stanley Cup, and the Detroit Shock won its first WNBA championship. To have William Davidson's name on this Player Development Center is going to mean a lot for us because of who he is, a former student athlete, a graduate of the university, and someone who's an iconic figure in the game of basketball. He loved the game, he loved the guys who played the game, and he was supportive of basketball in every way. And the fact that our recruits and our players and our coaches will enter a building virtually every day that has his name atop the door is, is a really remarkable and wonderful thing, and we will be eternally indebted to the Davidson Foundation for their generosity. The William Davidson Foundation's generous gift of seven and a half million to athletics for the William Davidson Player Development Center establishes a legacy that will live on forever. Bill Davidson would be proud of the William Davidson Foundation of the University of Michigan, his alma mater, and of course of Michigan basketball, knowing that it's back at the forefront of Big Ten competition. Well, the week ended up for the women's basketball team. They finished their Big Ten regular season this week, and our own Anthony Palladano was along for the ride. Thursday was senior night for U of M, and Carmen Reynolds, one of the three Wolverines playing in her last home game, got things rolling for the Maize and Blue, giving them an early five-point lead. Reynolds against Chelsea Jones, drives it at her right hand, layup at the rim. Rachel Sheffer led Michigan with 15 points and eight boards. Good layup with the left hand, good. But the Boilermaker defense was just too tough as Purdue wore down Michigan, pulling away late in a physical game, 60 to 49. On Sunday, the Wolverines were in Iowa City to face off against the Hawkeyes. And unlike the previous game, the shots were falling for both teams. Sheffer now left wing Reynolds for three. It's up and it's in. The Wolverines started out strong as Reynolds and fellow senior Courtney Boylan helped Michigan grab an early 21-13 advantage. But the Hawkeyes came back thanks to a barrage of three-pointers, scoring at a pace that Michigan could not hang with. A 14-2 run at the end of the half sent Michigan into the locker room down 34-45. Put back at the buzzer, up and in. The Wolverines cut it down to six in the second half as Sam Arnold scored all of her 13 points after the break and Kate Thompson helped out with 14 off the bench. Missed it, rebound Kate Thompson, Thompson with a putback. But freshman Sam Logic laid a triple-double on the Wolverines and Melissa Dixon had 22 as Iowa sent U of M to their third loss in four games, 79-71. After back-to-back -back losses to end the regular season, the Wolverines may have some work to do to get into the NCAA tourney. That work will begin on Thursday as they travel to Indianapolis to take on Illinois in the first round of the Big Ten Tournament. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Anthony Palladano. All right, Anthony, thanks. For all the latest on the women's team, we invite you to check out mgoblue.com. 
Thanks for joining us on this week's edition of Inside Michigan Basketball. We invite you back next week. We recap how the women did down in Indianapolis, and we recap how John Beeline and the men's team did in their final regular season games of the season. Tough road matchups at Illinois and at Penn State. Until then, I'm Matt Shepard saying thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week right here on Inside Michigan Basketball, and go Blue! Thank you.